Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. If you are giving online, if you are not in the church, you can follow the financial details you see online and give. God's fire must meet your offering on the altar. God's fire. If God must touch you, you have to meet your offering on the altar. Before the fire fell, the sacrifice must be on the altar. That altar is not an altar until there is a sacrifice on it. I want us to be serious tonight. Be serious tonight. This three nights, be serious. This is the first day of the month of July. Even the wicked understands this principle. Even the wicked people, they know how to sacrifice to their evil altars against the children of God. They know how to sacrifice all kinds of things. They know how to put blood, sacrifice, all kinds of things against the people of God. That is why your sacrifice matters a lot before God. The year has gone half. Today is the first day of the month of July. God is the beginning and God is the end. He is the first and he is the last. This is a time and a um, time that is characterized with the name of God. He is the Alpha. He is also the Omega. That is why you don't play with a day like this. I always tell people, it's not that other things are not important. But two major days of time, you don't joke with is the beginning of a day and the end of a day. The first of a day and the last of that day. Amen. God is the first and God is the last. Yes. Hallelujah. That's why we don't joke with it. We still believe even let you know. That's why in Psalm 92, the Bible said it is a good thing to give thanks to God and to see praises unto your Lord because it was high. To show forth your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness in the night. Morning is the beginning of the day and night is the ending of that day. God is always the first and he is the last. Don't joke with the beginning of a day and the end of a day. Don't joke with the beginning of a year and the end of the year. Don't joke with the beginning of the month and the end of the month. Because that God brought you into the new month. And when you do well at the beginning, you will ensure to it that you will see the last day of the month. Yes. That is the way it works. It is hard to be praised and to be worshipped. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you are walking from far away, just follow the details you see online on the screen. Make sure your seed is on the altar. Before the fire begins to fall tonight, somebody say amen. amen. Before every other thing, I want us to give to our voice and appreciate this God again. This God that has brought us into the new months. Into the new month. Let us celebrate this. Appreciate God. Give him time. Give him praise. Give him all the glory. In your own way, magnify the name of the Lord. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Many things have happened in the first half. Glory be to the love of God. He has saved our lives. He has protected us. He has provided for us. He has showed us mercy. He has showed us his loving kindness. He has put the crown of his loving kindness upon our head. Give him thanks tonight. Magnify the name of the Lord. He is the Lord our God. He owns us and we don't go in ourselves. He owns us. We don't own ourselves. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him thanks. Magnify his name. Magnify his name. Magnify his name. The God that knows the end from the beginning. He knows the end from the beginning. Magnify his name. Let us adore him. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him glory. Thank you for the sunshine. Thank you for the rain. Thank you for the moon. Thank you for the stars. Thank you for everything. Thank you for everything. Magnify his holy name. 
Lord God will worship you. If it has not been of the Lord, the enemy would have swallowed us up. But thanks be to God, who has not allowed us to enter to the mouth of the enemy. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Exalt his name. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. For good health and for sound man. You traveled and you returned. And the Lord protected you. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Give him glory. Worship at his footstool. Exalt his name. Glory be to the Lamb of God. In Jesus, by name, we have worshipped the Lord. You are the all consuming fire. I worship you today. You are the all consuming fire. Come and manifest yourself. You are the all consuming fire. Lord, I worship you today. You are the all consuming fire. Come and manifest yourself. You got power in your eyes. Lord, I worship you today. You are the all consuming fire. Come and manifest yourself. Oh, destroy every wicked way. Consume every wickedness. You are the all consuming fire. Come and manifest yourself. And my beautiful You take it away in my shape. Take it away in my face. Make my life so beautiful, my beautiful mind. Take it away, I say. Take it away, my day. Make me just like you, my beautiful mind. Take it away, I say. Oh, take it away, my day. Make my life so beautiful, my beautiful life. Take it away, my shame. Uh -huh. Take it away, my pain. Make me just like you, just like you. I'm 
God break down the fight. Break down the fight. Well, before you ask God to break down the fire, there must be a reason why you want the fire to fall. There must be a reason. We don't, we don't just say, God, fire, bring fire. No. There must be a reason why you need the fire. There must be a reason. Even God in all the scriptures, everywhere you see God break down the fire, all those fire fell for a definite purpose. When God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah with fire, it was because their iniquity was too heavy. And God brought down fire and destroyed them. When the fire of God fell, when the enemies of Elijah gathered around about him, and Elijah called for fire from heaven, and God obeyed and brought the fire down to prove that Elijah was his servant, the fire fell and consumed the armies that came around Elijah. The real fire fell and roasted people, roasted them, roasted them like meat. Real raw fire fell. When Elijah had some fire. In all the places where you see the fire of God fall, it's also, uh, you know, proving something. Proving something. So there must be a reason why we want to ask God for fire tonight. Let us see, start from the book of 1 Kings chapter 18. Where it happened also, you know, for Elijah. I want to then it's just going to be like our key scripture, and then we'll see what God does. I am um, first king chapter 18 from verse 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long have you been between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if thou, then follow him. And the people answered him thus a word. Very simple. God told him, why are you still in between two opinions? Why are you one leg here, one leg here? One leg in the church, one leg in the shrine. One leg in the church, one leg in another society or another thing. So why are you in between two opinions? So that it can be or might be a, a defining moment or a night of decision for some people tonight. A night of decision. And you want to make up your mind that God it is me and you, or God it is me and my idol, or it is me and one thing or the other. God cannot share his glory with any man. God cannot share his glory with a graven image. We have to make a decision tonight. That's one of the major things we need to do these three nights. It is either God or no God at all. So, in this context, so many things will happen at that particular time. People have gone after Bali, following after Baal. And Elijah said, No, I cannot be alive and watch these things happen. People have left God, left the presence of God. Left the command of God, left the will of God, left, left, left everything about God and followed out of our life. And then Elijah told them, You don't deserve to walk this way. You can't claim to be, I am an Israelite of God, and then you have an idol. God is my God, and then you have another. God make that worry. Thou shalt not have any other God beside me. I am the only God and the only true God. So Elijah simply told them, let us stop all this nonsense and prove a point. If Baal is Baal, let him Baal is God. So let all of us now worship Baal. And if God is God, let us worship God. So from verse 22, then said Elijah unto the people, 
I, even I told you, you make the prophets of the wrong. The Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them be forgive us two bullocks. And let them choose one bullock for themselves. And cut in pieces. And lay it on wood. And put no fire under. And I will press the other bullock. And lay it on wood. And put no fire under. And call ye on the name of your gods. And I will call on the name of the Lord. And I will be capital later. And the God that answered by fire, let it be God. And all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. That means we agree. Let the contest begin. We agree. Let the God that answered by fire, let that God be God. Verse 25 and Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one put up for yourselves and bless it first. For you are many, and call on the name of your gods. They put so fire on them, and they took the bullock which was given them, and they pressed it and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, Oh, Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they lived upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a God. Either he is talking or he is pursuing or he is in a journey or peradventure he sleepers and must be awake. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with lies and nonsense till the blood gushed out of them. Oh my God, out upon them. And it came to pass when this day was passed that they prophesied unto the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that there was neither voice nor any to answer. From any that regarded, and then I just said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto me, and I repaired, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with his souls, he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order, 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 order. And cut the pillars in pieces. And laid him on the wood and said, Fill four barrels with water and pour it on the most sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, Do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, Do it again the third time. And they did it. The Time. And the water ran, ran about the altar, and he filled the church also with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am your servant. And that I have done all these things at thy will. Hear me, O oh Lord, hear me. That these people may know that thou art the Lord, Lord God, and thou hast turned their hearts back again. Verse 38. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the bond sacrifice and the wood and the stone and the dust and lick of the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Hallelujah. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the provision and slew them there. Tonight, the fire of the Lord will fall. Tonight, the fire will fall. Tonight the fire will fall in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. So Elijah said, Fire needs to fall. Let the God answer by fire. Let it be called. We need to prove a point to stop all these arguments. We need to prove a point. Let us know who is God. Let us know who to serve. Oh, you are God. 
from beginning to the end. There's no place for our human. You are God all by yourself. No argument. He's the only God. The only supreme God. Let us prove a point. There must be a reason for the fire. Elijah wanted to prove a point. To show them this is the real God. This is the only true God. So to mind. There are so many reasons I know that so many people all over the world now was you have one thing or the other in your heart or in your mind. That you want God to visit with fire. There are some of the stubborn pursuers of your destiny, stubborn enemies that have followed you to cross over the second line, the second half of the year. They want to follow you again. The affliction that you saw in the first half, they want to follow you again into the second half. What do you do to it? You need to call for fire. The stubborn problems, some chronic sicknesses, some stubborn afflictions, they are pursuing you. Some of them are stuck to your life. They don't want to let you go. You need to call the fire. You need to call the fire. When things become problematic, I've had testimony some time when something that attached themselves to me. I'm talking about human beings on unfriendly friends. People that came into me in a dubious way, in a, in a cunning and crafty way, they came into my life because when you're a pastor, everybody expects you to be doing good to everybody. So they came in through a cunning way. I never knew that they were dubious and terrible personalities until one day when I prayed the prayer of fire. And I said, God, Every in the satanic attachment around my life, Lord, separate us by fire. By the next morning, the same people that were around me, they came and said, They are going, they are leaving me. They left me for who? <laughs> they left me for who? There are some wicked attachments you don't tolerate in your life. This thing has been in your life for a long time. It will take fire to separate you from those things. Why do you need fire tonight? In the case of Elijah, Elijah wanted to turn the heart of the people back to God. Because their heart has gone far away. Elijah wanted to turn their heart back to God, which he did achieve. They said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. So they forsook bow, and then they followed the true God. Revival broke out. They left the God they were standing before. Their idols, they threw on their idols and followed after God. Elijah achieved that his purpose. The reason why he called for fire, he achieved it. One of the reasons why we need the fire tonight also is this separate reason. Because the hearts of so many people have been thrown away by materialism, thrown away by the God of Babylon, the spirit of Babylon, the Babylonic spirit have captured the soul of so many people. They have left God. They have forsaken God. The fountain of living water, they have forsaken God. So the best we can do is to call for the fire of God to bring the new revival, to talk the hearts of the people back to God. Do you know that so many people now come into the house of God is a heavy body? It's like a heavy load. It's like a body. Something that should be our greatest joy. 
David said, I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad. When they said, let us go to the house of God. But nowadays, it is I am sad when they say, let us go to church. I am sad. People are sad. They just want to dwell on false comfort. What I call a false comfort. You sit down on the, you sit down on the fireplace, you drink tea, you drink things, you eat and you drink, and that person thinks it's life. And you left God, left the work of God, left the program of God, and you still want the same God to keep protecting you and to be blessing you. We want God to turn the hearts of the people back to Him. Many have gone astray, many have passed me. Go back. Is it not the same brother that used to come to church? Oh, I saw you smoking. I saw you drinking. I saw you smoking marijuana. I saw you drinking. Ah, he started taking drugs. But he was he was a body fire before. He was born for Christ before. What has happened? Is that not the sister we know before? Now the sister has changed. Another spirit has entered into her. You know, become like Eve and Adam. With Adam and Eve disobeyed God. When God called them in the Garden of Eden, Adam, where are you? Say, ah, I am naked. God said, Who told you you are naked? Have you eaten the fruit I say you should not eat? Have you disobeyed me? So when you see you on the road, ah, Pastor is coming and they are hiding. Pastor is not even God. They see Pastor, they are hiding. Because iniquity has overwhelmed them. Sin has overwhelmed them. Sin has overwhelmed them. Prayer life is stop. Studying the word of God is stop. Everything is gone from them. Satan has stolen everything that you receive from God. All he's now waiting for is one day to cast them down from below the belt. May God forbid in the name of Jesus Christ. So tonight is going to also be an opportunity for somebody to return back to God. To come back to where you fell from. To return back to God. It's not just for fire to stop burning. There must be a reason why God will send you fire. So many have lost their fire. They have become as cold as an ordinary thing. God is saying, I want you to be on fire. He said, you are neither cold nor hot. You are lukewarm. You are neither cold nor hot. You are neither cold nor hot. He said, I will spew you out of my mouth. God wants us to be on fire. Why? Because the Lord our God is fire. The nature of God is fire. His nature is fire. That's how he wants us to be. To be born in fire. That's the reason why we need the fire. So follow me as I go through some of these things before we pray. A very short prayer. And then we close. So number one, we need the fire for the fulfillment of prophecies. Prophecies. So many things that God has said that are yet to come to pass. So many things that God has prophesied over your life. And you know it that God gave you that word. You know it that it was God that said it. But you are not seeing the fulfillment. And you are not concerned about why is this just not coming to pass? That's why you need the fire for the fulfillment of prophecy. Fire to consume everything that is delaying the program of God, delaying the plan of God, delaying and detaining the word of God in your life. You need the fire to get them off the way so that you think. What's God has said concerning you can come to pass. Somebody say amen. And the second one is for activation of your potential and your giftings. Fire comes to activate your potential and your giftings. I used to say that nobody is empty. There's nobody that is empty. 
Everybody is endowed with one potential or the other. What you have, I don't have. And so the ones I have, you don't have. Nobody is empty. That's why when you see a little child coming into the world, he comes in with his hands closed. His hands are closed when he comes out of the mother's womb. His hands are closed because he has something in the hand. He's, and he's holding. He's holding that intellectually. He's holding it. So where are your potentials? Where are your giftings? Why are they not coming us? Why are you not using them? Why are they still dormant? You need fire to activate your potential and to activate the gift is that God has put on the inside of you. The songs that you can sing, the poem that you can write, the instruments that you can play, so many things that God has put on the inside of you. We are watching the other day on, the, on, the, on the YouTube, a young boy in Africa have just built a transformer. Young boy built a transformer that is giving light to people in the neighborhood in Nigeria. That there is no, we have there is no opportunity for him. His father is what is not rich. Managed to build a transformer. Now the governor of the state has given him a scholarship to go and study abroad five years. You can imagine what he's not going to become by the time he finished studying that and read up. You have a potential. You have been gifted. We need the fire of God to find the flame and bring them out. God's fire comes to prove a point in somebody's life. He came to prove that he is God in the name of Elijah. And he also came to prove a point that Elijah is his servant. When people are contesting, they have to come upon your life. When people are doubting, they have to come upon your life. When people are mocking, they have to come upon your life. You need the fire of God to distinguish you. You need the fire of God to answer them. You need the fire of God to prove that you are the son of the living God. That you are the son of the living God. The fire comes to prove a point. We need the fire for purification, like gold. Like gold. You want the gold to shine brighter, you refine it, you purify the gold, and it will shine brighter. So it doesn't matter how much exploits that you're doing now. It doesn't matter your level of exploits. You don't remain at this spot. You keep on shining and shining and shining. Hallelujah. Amen. We with an open face, behold it, as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are being changed into this very image from glory to glory by the Spirit of God. From glory to glory. Amen. From one level to another level. Amen. One level to another level. We keep on going from glory to glory, keep on shining. So the fire comes to purify us. To purify us. To so make us to shine brighter for God. It's going to sharpen your zeal for God. All the sins that are making you to become tired concerning the things of God. The fire comes to consume all your sins. Your sin will come alive again. Your passion will come alive again. Passion for souls will come alive again. Hallelujah. Passion for souls. Passion for souls. Passion for souls. Very, very important. Do you care how we see so many people on the road? You see them somewhere hanging around, and you know that these people are on their way to hell. You know that these people, they don't know Christ. They don't have Christ. Does he really touch you? What happens to them? Does he touch you? Do you think or feel like preaching to them or ministering to them to bring them out of darkness? If that is not happening, if you don't have any compassionate heart towards the lost souls, you need be fire. You need the fire. So revive your heart. So revive to renew the fire. 
the, oh God, the passion for soul to rekindle it in your heart. Passion for souls. Passion for souls. Apostle Paul said, Woe is unto me if I don't preach the gospel. He said, Knowing the terror of God will persuade men. Knowing the terror of God. Knowing the terror of God will persuade men. How do you feel when millions are wasted every day? Lying up on the gates of hell. Does it touch you? We need a fire to enable the passion for souls. Somebody say amen. amen. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Mama says you need the fire of God for the manifestation of his fame and glory. The glory of God and his faith. The glory of God and his faith. When God wants to show up, he manifests his glory like never before. You need the fire. Either he uses you to do extraordinary things, to do supernatural things, to do miraculous things. When the fire comes upon you, glory be to God. You saw it on the day of Pentecost. When the fire of God came down, Upon the disciples, every one of them, people that we are timid, people that we are fearful, they are they receive a heart transplant. They begin to preach the word of God with boldness and with authority. Yeah. With boldness. And Peter, that was a timid man, preached the word of God, and three thousand souls we are saved in one message in one night. The fire comes to manifest or to, for God to manifest his faith and his glory. His faith and his glory. And that's what my God is doing in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You need a fire. We need the fire. We need the fire. Number seven, we need this fire for healing, for restoration, and for recovery. I love this scripture that says, if a man carry fire in his bosom, can a man carry fire in his bosom without getting burnt? <laughs> can a man carry fire in his bosom without getting burnt? When things that belong to you is a big cup of healing. When things that belong to you is in the hands of your enemy, and God comes with fire. Or God burns those things into fire. They will release it. The fire of God has no mercy for sickness. The fire of God has no mercy for diseases. The fire of God has no mercy for any kind of affliction. And tonight, wherever you are watching, tonight, whatever sickness or disease, that is prophetic in your body. The fire of God will follow them now. The fire of God will consume them now. In the name of Jesus. You must be free from that sickness. You must be free from that disease. By the fire of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Shout to believe in Amen. You need the fire of God to deal with the evil beast. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 25. Or is it chapter 34? The Lord said, I will make with them a covenant of peace. And I will cause the evil beast to sit in their land. They shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. I will cause the evil beast to sit in their land. You know what an evil beast is? When the evil beast is coming, he has come to destroy. He comes to devour. Evil beast, when he comes, he does not have anything called mercy. He comes to devour. The God said, I'm going to put a stop to the oppression of the evil beast. And when the fire of God comes, it doesn't matter wherever or whatever the evil beast represents, the fire of God will check it out in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! That was how Apostle Paul was passing by a viper, a venomous beast, 
on his hand. Everybody was expecting to see Paul fall down and die. And when the Bible said that Paul, he shook off the beast into the fire. And people say, wow, this one is not an ordinary man. This one is a God. The Bible said, they changed their mind. And they said that this man is a God. Everything that will be fasting upon your destiny. Tonight, we will shake you up into the fire. In the name of Jesus. Tonight, we will shake you up into the fire. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The fire comes to deal with the evil beast. The evil beast. The evil beast. Every evil beast that go out in this second half. They say in every new level, there is a new devil. Every next level, there is another devil. Every new level, there is a new devil. Everything that is a new devil. Every evil beast. That have been unleashed from the gate of hell to defy mankind. Tonight, before this service is over, let the fire of God consume them now. In the name of Jesus, let the fire of God consume the evil beast. Consume them, consume them, consume them, consume them, consume them, consume them. In the name of Jesus. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. You like to hear this? You did the fire because of the agents. Agents of hell are signed against you. Agents of sin have been given an assignment. Over you. Devil gives demons assignment over families. That is, you see that family, I assign you over them. Make sure nobody progresses. Make sure nobody gets married. Make sure nobody succeeds. <laughs> you need to deal with them. You need to deal with those things. Cause them off. Assign agent of hell, agent of dark. That's why you need fire because you don't mercy for them because they have no mercy. They have nothing in their hearts called mercy. They don't want to mercy for you. Let me read them out and then we'll begin to deal with them right now. Somebody say amen. The next one is everything that is covering your glory. Woo! Dark thoughts, evil clouds covering your glory. There are some people that are very, very intelligent, very, very, you have everything. The people are just some wickedness. Just cover that, that person, start cover the person's glory so that you will not shine. So that nobody will see your son, nobody will see your glory. You will labor and try and try and try. Ah, why are you thinking of this one? I'm better than this one. I'm better than this one. And they say, oh, something has covered his glory. When the people that are supposed to see your star, when they come around, the glory is gone. When the people that are looking for you to give you a contract, they are looking for you to do business with you, they are looking for you to, to marry you. Oh my God. Yes. It's really in the area of marriage. You don't have to cover the glory of the woman. A man wants to marry you, they give the woman another kind of face. Look at the face of the woman and they run away. All oh, this thing they do in the forces of wickedness. That's why you need fire. That's why you need fire. So many people are wearing masks in the faces in the street world. They are put up on the mask. Some people are wearing garments of shame, garments of these people. Garments. You come around people, they don't want to stay around you. Garments of this table. Garments of shame. They are immoral garments. The woman told us that that's how she shall be living her life in immorality. 
because somebody cursed her before she left Africa and she came to Ireland. The woman she, she, she labored in her, the, the woman that trained her, put a curse on her, told her, You are coming to Ireland, you're going to be a prostitute. And she said that since she came into the land, that is what she had been doing. She was wearing it as a garment. That's what the fire of God is for. Things that covers your glory. Covers your glory. The glory of the family can be covered. The glory of the church can be covered. You're doing something in your church, another thing is another kind of interpretation outside about what you're doing on the inside here. Giving people another interpretation. That's why you need a fire. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Glory be to the Lamb of God. That is why we need the fire tonight. Garment of shame. Garment of shame. There is a garment of failure. When you see somebody, everything he failed, everything he failed, everything he failed. Garment of failure. Garment of failure. We need a fire. Come into this favor, lack of favor. Others are getting favor, but you can't get favor. We have doors that open for everybody. When you get to his door, the door will, the door will close. It's not ordinary. When you get to his door, the door will close. The next one. I call it the nest of evil birds. When birds come to make a nest, I mean, not good birds, evil birds come to make a nest around your habitation, causing all kinds of havoc, causing all kinds of evil. A woman saw us in Africa, they brought us to our church in Africa, and the woman said, There is this bird, bird. There is always following this woman. Everywhere this woman went to, the bird was following her. As we are talking to her, she said, Do you see me? Do you see me? Do you see her? Look at it, that black one. Look at it. Once the woman is going out, the bed will take off. Anywhere she goes, that bird follows her. Until fire came to set her free from that bed. It will be. She'll be sleeping, the bed will come to the window and sleep her as I'll be sleeping there, make his own nest on the window, waiting for the one to wake up. Once she wakes up, the bed wakes up. Everywhere she goes, the bed follows her. The bird. English said, will say, Daddy, it's bird. Not bed, bird. Hallelujah. As long as my children will, they are listening to me there. That he is born in North Bay. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. So, all those kinds of blessed God will have to roast them on fire tonight. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory be to the Lamb of God. I've talked about so many things. I don't know what you have in mind, but you want the fire of God to visit tonight. That is happening around your habitation. Happening around your children, or around your friends, or how, around your spouse. The things you don't want to see in your life. The things you are tired of seeing. Fire comes to say, enough is enough. That's the reason why fire comes. Fire comes to say, enough is enough. I mean, the fire of God, when he falls, he says, enough is enough. Enough of your problem. Enough of this problems. Enough of this affliction. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. So get ready. 
When the fire comes, you see that your potential and our governments that are dead, they are jumping back to life in you tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is going to prove a point tonight. He's going to show the world that his hand is present upon your life. Glory be to God. And God is going to purify us as gold tonight. Praise the Lord. Purify me like gold. So I might be bold to say that my body is your sanctuary. You refine me like gold. You will manifest his glory through us. But it's that he re releases the fire upon us. His healing time, restoration, and recovery will be so imminent these three days in the name of Jesus Christ. And everything that is covering our glory shall be wasted by fire to that. Everything that is coming our glory shall be roasted by fire tonight. Everything that is coming the glory of your church, the glory of your family, the glory of your business, the glory of your career. Everything that is covering your star and your glory shall be roasted by fire tonight. In the name of Jesus, every assigned agent of hell, pray the kusuke kaprani yanagoya. Rise up on your feet. Every agent of hell that has been assigned against your family, go ahead and pray that prayer. Every agent of hell that is assigned against my family, assigned against my children, assigned against my relationship ministry, assigned against your life, let the fire of God, let the fire of God, let the fire of God be set on them now. Let the fire of God. You set your death down. Let the fire of God. You set your death down. But a death of hell. But it's an assignment to kill and to steal and to destroy the fire. The fire of God. The fire of God. The fire of God. The fire of God. Go shoot now. Go shoot now. Go shoot now. Go shoot now. The fire of God. Go shoot now. Go shoot them down. In the name of Jesus, consume them now. Consume them now. Consume them now. In the name of Jesus, consume them now. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Say, Father, I demand for your fire tonight upon my life to fall off every time. Every disease, every ambition, every pain that my father has so planted, every day you see, this from this seed, rich man's seed, satanic seed that God has not planted in my life tonight. May the fire of God begin to consume them, consume them. Go ahead and begin to pray. Set us apart by your fire. 
and say, Use your choice in the name of Jesus. Set us apart by your fire, by your glory. Set us apart tonight. You say, This is your second. You say, This is your second. By your fire. 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 The solution so far. By your mind. Glory to God. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Lastly, because of time, we will continue tomorrow. Because of time, Isaiah chapter 66. Fire of God comes for judgment. Judgment for world and every form of abominable acts. Judgment upon evil altars. Evil altars that will not want that does not want to let you go. Evil altars that does not want to help make you to fulfill your destiny, allow you to fulfill your destiny. Evil altars erected to frustrate your life and your destiny. God's fire calls for judgment. Isaiah chapter 66, that's the last thing that we're going to read for tonight. Verse 15. Isaiah 66, verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. And with his chariots, like a wild wind, to render his anger with fury, and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire, and by his sword, we the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. Say, Father, tonight, God by fire, let your fire fall, let your fire fall, let your fire fall for judgment and for vengeance against every enemy of my soul, every enemy of my destiny. Let your fire fall for judgment and for vengeance in the name of Jesus. May I end up in the name of Jesus. By fire and by the sword. By fire and by the sword. By fire and by the sword. They in a rock and say, they can't. I'm not going to go so they By fire and by the sword. The Lord they call it fire. For the Lord they call it fire. For the Lord they call it fire. By fire, by the sword, every enemy of your choice, she take a person who will be a man to Pada, 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 Vengeance, judgment, is the enemy, and the Borussia, and the Zabadeli, and the Bayanos, and the Yadarawan, and when they come with the glory of the church, vengeance of fire, vengeance of fire, vengeance of fire, by fire and by the sword, go into action, go to war, go to war, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, every sickness and disease, every affliction, make a paradox. Come by fire, come down by fire, by fire by the sword. In the name of Jesus, make the vengeance, make the judgments. In the name of Jesus, make the judgments. Tonight, tonight, make the judgments. Over the enemies of our soul, enemies of our destiny. In the name of Jesus. In the bush, and he did never die. And Prada Baros, she can say that I got out of the party. Let me get a consumer. And Prada Baros, Corona Macasegate, you see a Nazianus, go to Pacabo, 